This is a new question that I haven't seen before. Okay, good. What is your recommendation for oil viscosity and filter? Uh, Viscosity-wise, <coughs> um, usually what we found, we always come back to 1030. So if we're talking a 602 or a 604, uh, we always come back to 1030. Um, the only exception to that is going to be the Klotz 1040. And what we found with the Klotz 1040, and, and I wouldn't be, I mean, like any 1040 from any oil manufacturer is probably going to be just as good. I mean, not just as good as the Klotz. Klotz is the best shit we've ever tested. Mm -hmm. But it's going to do the same thing, which is carry out that horsepower as the oil temperature increases, you know, over, I mean, over the duration of a race, for instance. So, but essentially, everything we recommend is going to be a 1030. Or a, or that 1040 clause. Well, should we talk a moment, because um, I've talked to Buck about this before, and I know you have as well, mm -hmm. is that what's fascinating, a lot of times when we try to look at scientific things, we think that we are comparing apples and apples. And we're not. But the truth is we're not. And that, let's say an oil would be technically 8 and a 26, it would still be a 1030. Right. Whereas it could also be a 12, 38, and it would maybe be a 1030 still. I mean, or maybe it'd be 36 or something. But when it's you, there's, a, there's a range in there that... When you, get, <clears throat> when you get into oil viscosity, it's like more confusing than the entire Democratic Party. It really, it really is, because <laughs> the thing is, is that that's what it measures at particular temperatures. And here's the thing, is that, do, are we ever running our engines at 10 degrees or at um, 100 degrees? It's, it's like zero degrees and, and 100 degrees. That's the viscosities at, that's how those are measured. But the truth is, I well, mean, it's these like three, engines... like 300, I think. No, they're not. I mean, how they measure oil? Uh-uh. No, it's done at like zero degrees and like 100 degrees, something like that. I don't know. We'd have to ask Buck again. Yeah. But what it's not, none of these oils are measured for viscosity at the actual temperatures that our engines are running in. No. That's the biggest difference. So our, is our oil going to break down when we have uh, these higher temperatures in our engines? Or is the oil going to break down? Or is it going to continue to lubricate? That's the big question uh, that we... And that's why we go with the racing oils <coughs> that have the extra additives in them and things like that. Because we're pushing these oils a hell of a lot harder than well, what you'd have with a regular passenger well, car. We, we have oil recommendations because I've seen the engines apart mm -hmm. after they've run for a whole season. And that's why I recommend not only for power, you know, I mean peak power, but for, you know, protection. Yeah. That being said, any name brand top quality oil, you're gonna you're gonna have that protection. You might not have the power, so I mean you can run. I don't know. I'm just gonna throw out like Valvoline. You can run Valvoline 1030. Yeah, you might be down five horsepower over you know Schaefer's 1030, or you might be down eight horsepower over Klotz 1040. But the engine's gonna be protect, gonna be protected. So yeah, I mean, a lot of this depends on your budget too. I mean, what you're oh, willing sure. to spend to make the maximum. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, how what kind of competition you're up against? Right. I mean, if you're if you're in the I'm just happy to have engine, like have customers who change their oil. <laughs> so I mean, that's a thing. That is a total thing. I've had people who bring an engine back like 20 races later, and it's like. Oh, yeah, I got some blow-by, and it's like the same oil it went out the door with. And the same spark plugs. So, don't do that. Yeah. 